Hello, and welcome back to the next video in the tutorial series that I am doing. This one, we are looking at military aspects, so ship designing and fleet manager and building. I will also go over some text for it, as well as various different aspects. So let's get down to it when you start off you start off with a corvette and a defense platform and if any of you are wondering what this ship set is it's a mod it's the vorlon ship set the vorlons are a race from the show babylon 5 but when you start out, you get an interceptor. You get a an auto cannon. You get a mass driver, level one, and actually you get two of them here. Don't actually have a laser installed on the first one. They have two mass drivers and then a missile. My suggestion, switch one of the cannons into a laser. As you can see the bonuses, lasers have bonus damage to armor and hull. Whereas um, mass drivers and eventually railguns have only bonus damage to shields. So you want to make sure that you have something for each of the defenses. Shields, armor, and then obviously the ship's hull. And then this, the, these little missiles, they actually bypass shields. They're really good if you just want to say, I don't want to deal with those that stack shields mate, and only deal a little bit of armor and hull. You can completely negate their shields with just this weapon. It's pretty nice. There's others, like the disruptor here, that bypass both shield and armor, which means it goes straight for the hull. Always fun, but it does have some limitations. It's a very short range weapon and doesn't do a whole lot of damage either. Whereas these do a fair bit more damage, as you can see. Barely five and a half. This one does almost 12 and a half damage on average. So, let's look at some of the other weapons. We have Laser, which at higher tiers does use crystals. Same with other things. This one uses moats. Uh, this one uses crystals. This one uses gas. And this one uses moats. So, we have the Plasma Accelerator. This one is good for knocking out armor very fast but as you can see it has a big negative to shield damage so even though it does a good amount of damage shields will negate 75 percent of that damage so you always want to have again something that will knock out shields um this particular thing it from encountering I believe it's the space whales or the Tyonic Ionki it's an energy siphon it literally is there just to drain shields if anyone has ever watched Star Trek think of the green energy dampening device uh, we have the auto ripper cannon this you get a little later about time you get um mass driver three so 
about the time you get, uh, or about the time you get the first railgun. Sorry. And if you want to look at obsolete opponents, in case, say, you've researched a tech, but haven't gotten the rare resources to actually use, you can downgrade the weapons to something that can still use for your ships to continue to build ships. You also want to take off the auto upgrade. Otherwise, it will keep automatically upgrading it with the newest thing, whether you have the special resource for it or not. And I almost forgot when you first get in, you first go into the ship designer here. Hotkeys F9. This will be selected, which means you can't modify this your ships yourself. This will automatically design your ships. But it is a very poor substitute for doing it yourself. As it will switch around these randomly. So on some battles, your ships might do extremely well, and then you get an upgrade or something. It completely redoes, re, yeah, redoes all of this, and then the next battle, your ships get wiped out. It also does not fill the auxiliary slot here. Which you start out with the reactor boosters. Uh, through tech, you can get afterburners, reactive armor, which hardens armor. It makes it harder for armor damaging weapons to well, damage the armor. You get fire control, adds more chance to hit. Shield capacity just boosts the overall. Um, bonus that your shields give, and then Shield Hardener does the same thing that the Active Armor does. It hardens your shields, makes it harder for shield-busting tech, or shield-busting uh, weapons to break through your shields. Means your ships live longer. Alright, and then for... For defenses, you have, will always have some sort of armor and some sort of shield. Some things, like the crystal plating here, you can get via um, contacts and whatnot from the um, crystal shards, the living crystal shards that you might see, encounter in the galaxy at large. So something you would across like this. This is a pirate fleet, but very similar. Oh, here we go. Spaceborne life. You have space amoebas. This is where you can get... This is where you get the ability to have generative hull tissue. You get to research that tech from them. Just like you get to research... Crystal infused plating from the crystalline entities that you see. Over here, you have your power generator for your ships, your hyperdrive, your impulse thrusters, so sublight speed, warp speed, basically, your sensors, and your tactile computers. This helps your ships battle. You start out with a basic computer. It just says swarm tactics. So all it does is tell the ship, oh look, I'm supposed to swarm everything and buzz around it like little flies. The upgrade of that is the basic combat computer. As you can see here, it costs a little more power, yes, and extra alloy, but you get extra 5% fire rate and 5% evasion. So right now, evasion is actually pretty good. And then the next one you have costs another 5 power, 
but doubles the ship fire rate and evasion. And then the... Most likely the final one you will usually see is the Autonomous Ship Intellect Swarm. This costs a bit more, but as you can see, you get a giant bonus to evasion. It's the, you can't touch this one for swarm. That should boost it to the max of 90% for evasion. That's the maximum you can have. Once you're done setting up your ship, you hit save. Yes, I want to overwrite the design to be this new upgraded design. Under the Corvette class, you have Interceptor, but you also have Picket Ship. We'll look at this real quick. Picket Ship has two small slots, so you can put two regular weapons in there. Then it also has what is known as Point Defense. So you can either put the Guardian Point Defense or Flak Battery in there. Each of them have bonuses over the other one. This one has more damage, whereas this one has... Is it range? Tracking. They're tracking. Has better tracking. Also, apparently has shield penetration and shield damage. Whereas this one has armor penetration and armor damage. But both of these are used to deal with enemy missiles and enemy um, fighter craft. We'll get to fighter craft momentarily. Moving on, you have the frigate. And the only thing you have for a frigate is just a torpedo boat. So this is a, it's the same size and just a basic rework of the Corvette. But you get this after you unlock a missile tech. I believe it is, yeah, just space torpedoes. You get that after that. This is good for taking out large ships as well as star bases. So this is good against battleships, titans, star bases, uh, juggernauts, and possibly cruisers. Yeah. Alright. Next on the list, destroyers. Now, destroyers are the first one that have a two- section hole. You have the bow, which you have a gunship, which gives you two small, one medium slot, and um, six small utility slots, which are these. These are your utility slots, also known as defense slots. A picket ship will give you, this section, give you one point defense, two small and six utility and then the artillery bow will give you one large weapon i tend to since this since a destroyer is usually a picket one i usually go with a gunship it'll stay at a relative range as you can see here it will stay at a medium range so these will be very handy for it, especially this one. And then you have the second part of the hull. You have Picket Stern, adds two more point defense. Interceptor Stern, which adds two small weapon slots, but it is the only one that has two auxiliary slots, which is why I go for this one. You get an extra auxiliary slot. Then you have the gunship stern, which gives you just a single medium weapon slot. Alright, on to cruisers. This one, you get three sections, and from here on, you pretty much have three section ships. You have the bow, which you can have either artillery, which gives... One large weapon slot or medium 
utility slots, a torpedo bow, which gives you two small weapon slots, one missile, I don't, don't know why they call it, I have it as a G, um, maybe guided missiles, what they're going for with that, but it gives you one of those, and four ut medium utility slots, or you have the broadside bow, which gives two medium weapons and four utilities. Mine is set to artillery. Because I have this one as line, it will stay at a medium distance as well and just pepper the crap out of whatever they're targeting. I also went with the artillery core. For the cores, you have a hangar, which gives you two point defense slots, one hangar bay slot for fighters, and four medium utility slots. You got the artillery core, one medium, one large weapon. Broadside core, three medium, and then to the torpedo core gives you two small and two, or two small weapons and then two missiles, missile weapon slots. Yeah, that's all we have there. And then the back end, the stern butt of the ship, you have a broadside stern, which is one medium and two utility. You have the gunship stern, which is two small and three utility. Thus is why I have it as a gunship one. I have three utilities. I have regenerative hull, hardened armor, and hardened shields. And I need to switch this to the line one. As you can see, it might up the price and the power usage, but it doubles the chance to hit and the fire rate. So this one always starts with the line tactics, but can also be torpedo, picket, um, artillery, or carrier. Each of them will stay at a specific range. Artillery is long range, and carrier is maximum range, which means they will practically stay at the edge of the system and let their fighters do all of the work. Um, what is the range on these? 45 to 100. So that's pretty much medium to long range. For now, I'm just going to keep it as line. Save that. Got to do the same thing for here. Torpedo. So you have artillery or torpedo. So it has evasion and explosive weapon damage. Which... Hey, look, both of them are explosive weapon damage. Good for that. This one is just ship fire rate and weapons range. Yeah, that's okay. We're gonna go with that. Alright, on to the next one. The battleship. Really big honker. Alright, so when you start out, you don't start out with the spinal mount bow. You actually have to research... Um, the Tachyon Lance, or, oh, what's the other one? Tachyon Lance, or, Particle Lance, I believe is what it is, to unlock the Spinal Mount. So, you start out with this one with Broadside, Artillery, and Hangar. Just those three. You can see here, for the Broadside, you get Two small, one medium, and one large le weapon slot, and three large utility slots. For the artillery, you start out with, uh, or it gives you two large. For the hangar, it gives you two point defense, one medium, one hangar bay. And then for the spinal mount, it will give you one X-sized weapon, which is this. It does... As you can see, the damage is somewhere between 780 and 1950. On average, each shot will do 116 and a half ish damage. However, the firing arc is pretty much only 25 degrees in front of it. 
as opposed to some other ones. That don't have an arc. They will fire anywhere around it. It also doesn't do quite nearly as much damage. Alright, and then we have the carrier or I chose for this one. So, we have broadside, artillery, hangar, carrier. The difference between the two is literally what you get in the weapon slot for the hangar versus the carrier. For the hangar, you have four medium weapons and one hangar bay. Carrier, you have two point defense, two small weapons, and two hangar bays for fighters. Broadside, two mediums, two larges, and for artillery, you get three large. For the stern, you have artillery or broadside. I go with broadside because it gives you an extra utility slot. This is kind of a new thing recently where they actually have one that has differing utility slots than the others. It used to be just all the same, as far as I remember. Artillery, you get one large. Broadside, you get two mediums. So again, for this one, I chose Baron of Hull. I chose uh, Hardened Shields. And in this case, I decided to go with Afterburners to, you know, make it a little faster. As you can see, it's the slowest one in Fleet. So, whatever you have in your fleet, whatever the slowest ship is, that's what dictates the speed of your fleet. So if you want a really fast fleet, go with your fast ships. Frigate or Corvette and Destroyers are pretty much your fastest ones, with Frigate being right behind that. Huh. Frigate and Cruisers, I actually have as the same. Alright, defense platforms. This, you can vary. Both sides have the same selection. Light station, you get four small weapon slots. Point defense, you get four point defense slots. Medium section, you get two medium weapon slots. And then missile section, you get two missile slots. So it's the same thing both sides so it doesn't really matter go with and each of them will give you utility and an auxiliary utility and auxiliary now here you notice it has only a reactor sensors and a computer it doesn't need to move it doesn't need engines or jump drive these you build at your star bases Let's go to, if I can find my system, let's go to a star base. There we go. Defenses. Defense platform. Now, this will tell you how much it costs to build each one. So, it'll cost almost 400 alloys, one moat, three gas. It will boost the fire power of the station overall. And there's certain things you can do to actually give you more platforms. Because right now you can only I can only build 18 of them for this one. With it's not command center. I haven't unlocked it yet, apparently. But there is a starbase component on um, defense supercomputer grid, something like that. It looks the picture looks very similar to this, just a little different, and it will give you a lot more defenses. I do not know if I. No, I am not researching that right now. 
Do I even have that come up? No. Well, that's annoying. Alright. Out of the base game or the starter pack they have, you may also have Titans. I haven't found that yet in this one, but a Titan, you only have three sections. You have the Titan Mount, which is another X, the Titan Core, and the Titan Stern. I uh, don't quite remember what the weapons selection are for that, but Titans typically are targeted first. They also have a nice little bonus uh, slot that allows them to either decrease the enemy's shield capacity, decrease their evasion, or decrease their ability to make a emergency jump out of battle. And the bonuses are bonus to shield, Bonus to strike craft and bonus to range and bonus to hull repair. Here for, uh, for fleet that it is in. It will only work on the fleet that it is in. Best to use one Titan per fleet, as you can usually only build a maximum of two or three, depending on your um, empire size. I believe this tells you how many and have of each one. But it's being stubborn for me today, apparently. Back to ship designer. Uh, as you can see, I also need to do something here. So this is my artillery battleship, and this is my carrier battleship. So this one, I need to have as carrier. And this one needs to be upgraded to artillery. There. Both of them, yes, both of them have the same boosts. All right, so fleet composition. I always have one of my fleets just be the quickest ships or vets. You can put a lot of them in there because it's Corvette is one uh, command uh, yeah command point. So you can have a hundred and thirty Corvettes in this fleet. It's a nice swarm typically lose them a little faster, but they are ones that you can use to run down fleets that get past your lines. Go so quickly take them from one um, part of your empire all the way to another and chase down slower moving fleets from your enemies. Speaking of, my fleets are actually here for base after a small little battle. Okay, what else? Mm -hmm. For your empire, you always want to make sure you have choke points. So this is a nice little choke point. For every choke point, you want to have a... Bastion at so everything will be based on defense. You will won't deal with any anchorage, shipyards, or solar panels, or anything else that will be. You want torpedo batteries, gun batteries, or hangar bays. Each of them do various different things. Then for your buildings here, you want the Disruption Field Generator. It negates 20% of the enemy fleet's shields. Just flat 20% they don't have. And then you want the Communication Jammer. 
it keeps them, it slows them down, and causes them to have a negative to being able to have a combat disengagement chance, as you can see down there. The other things that you can put in here later on are if you have a fleet stationed here, you can put a command center. This will boost the ship fire rate of any fleets and ships in this sector. Or, not sector, but um, system. You also have, what else is here? Uh, dock ship upkeep. This, you need specific things, requires a salvage or enclave in the system. So this is very situational. You can also do a target uplink computer. Um, again, only deals with ships that are docked at this station. So, ship weapon range for both the starbase and defense platforms. I see it changed that. It used to only be just ships. Now they change it to defense platforms. So that one's actually pretty good if you want to have a buttload of defense platforms. You have a naval, a black hole observatory. That's if you built one around a black hole. Otherwise, it's not very useful. Naval logistics. This is only for star bases that have anchorage. As you can see, there's one here. Then you have nebula refinery. It will just give you minerals. And apparently gas now. That's new. Uh, battle simulators. This is good for shipyards. It gives your ships starting experience of 100. Yes, in the game, ships do get experience. It's crew experience, basically. The better the ship's crew, the higher damage, hull points, and armor they have. I as well as shields. They get bonuses. You have the listening post. This gives you sensor range and hyperlane detection. So it will go four system out. Here, it would go one, two, four. So it'd see either these two or out to here. Also. All the way this entire area seen. That helps for detecting fleets. About all it does. Or this is just a recent silo. It gives you an extra 5,000 for all your storage. Why I can up three five thousand thousand. Credits. I have a storages. Star bases. See. Going to be there. What else? We have hydroponics bay. I rarely use this because it's not too worth it to use. Higher building slot for better on planets that have um, food districts and or farming districts and other bonuses buildings. Uh, then you have crew quarters. This reduces dock ship upkeep by. This is good. Shipyards or any star base where you're stationed overall. Alright. <clears throat> so, back to the fleets. 
still be able to other things. So for this one, I have some Corvettes, some Frigates, uh, Destroyers. So I got an equal amount of cruisers and battleships. I have less of those. But this one, this fleet is mostly geared. Whereas this one, I have five more battleships. Battleships. Eight. Uh, one. Four. Eight. Titan will be 16. But basically doubles the mathematic of it. I won't even. But this one is more of a hard hitting take a bit, uh, take a base. It's a bit slow. This one will probably get Titan. This one, which is my carrier. So, they're all focused on carriers safe. These will stay back, back, and safe. We'll go forward, and these will go forward. Past the our base. Frigates will also stay farther back. Um, in this screen, I have a tool I to select it. Go, you like select whatever one. Mix, so you can play battleship. Either up and down arrows to increase the size. Increase the number of that particular, or you can just uh, I don't see at the moment. I will get seat way here. You have this specific, uh, you do. Um, is it mercenaries that work for you? Or the fleet? Upgrade the fleet. Set a base. Generally, I set it at a shipyard. That way, it's a new ship. It's into fleet. I have to travel to them. That's where I have quarters or station cost of uh, fleet station there. Now I'm just and it just this little button here of course everything. It'll just start putting ships in wherever fleet I have nine ships that, uh, two fleets that need total nine. That will cost a total of 12,600 alloys, some um, boats, crystals, other stuff, but for the most part, this will tell you what Final name. Well, it should be out four hundred out of four hundred seven. Now I have See, that I get two more ships, a Corvette and a Corvette for this fleet. That will round that fleet.
this one needs the other seven. So this will take quite a bit. Each will cost 1860 alloys, 5.2 gas, 6.2 crystal. A time of 400 days to build. Certain X will and reduce that, like this will decrease cost and speed. They'll be built faster. This one, uh, upkeep, it will reduce the upkeep of all your ships, but also increase capacity by 20%. Damage versus star bases, always nice. This helps with end limit. Moment, I am waiting for. Hive Worlds or to be Losses Project. This is get this from one of these, but you make basically a giant planet growing or population destroying planet killer. They are massive they have no weapons other than whatever they use. Cleanse, wipe out the planet, or the planet. Thus, you need to make sure they are protected. Or that there's nothing that can destroy them. Like any. I know there's another one that has it, but I look at it. Also, you have some other thing. Ascension perk also. Uh, it gives naval capacity of plus eight. ED is also. at other ability to uh you can color to me our base that's brass void gives you our base oh, vigilant this is good for if you have your pet stay behind them, maybe not deal with the galaxy, take some of their stuff. This gives you extra 25% and hull point. Uh, defense platforms, you get five more, and they do five percent. Galaxy just gives you bonus damage prices. And also hard. Other playthrough I have Uh, driven the simulator that is 
going to be crisis. They did. They chose this ascension. This also comes from crisis. That this tab here, and you get bonuses. How far down you've gone? That to win the game. Get what ton of dark matter? I mean, thousands of thousands of dark matter, million dark matter to upgrade your mega structure that's centered around star. It I don't actually it looks like a Tyson's base game, but it's, it's the or what they call it. It's, um, basically, it and you activate it, it destroys all the stars across the galaxy. Wiping out everything. Sin. The Shroud plan. Basically, become odds in there. Getting back to different. So, you can modify this. I usually have a nice. Some have, I don't know, all battleship players. Battleship frigates. Station system taking fleet some have faster hit and run corvette destroy destroyers fastest one I showed that it composition it is mostly up to how you have your set up Tips again, how you want to fight. Standard. Something for hull, something for armor and hull, and bypass. Else. Builds armor for this, even amount for the rest of them as you. All even amount. Depending on the in prices, uh, some will be strong against shields, others will be armor, others will be about equal between. So, depending on what in game prices you get, weapon you have, and you buy accordingly. Scourge specifically. Are very good against shields, not so good against armor and hull. Or as unbidden are very good. hull, not so good against might be reversed, but part that basic way. And that concludes this tutorial on ship designing and fleets. I hope you found it informational. If you um, if, oof, my brain just blanked. Have any question about this? Comment below if there's enough extra. Uh, enough questions about this and certain things, I will create did those questions specifically. Next vid. Ta-ta for now.